Hey guys, Razorblade Mango here, and uh, <laughs> today I'm going to be talking about something uh, rather unusual that's been going on in the video game landscape right now, and that would be this whole blue box, abandoned, Kojima, Silent Hill conspiracy thing. Or maybe I shouldn't say conspiracy, I should say really weird situation. Uh, so, I'm not going to summarize every single little bit of evidence or circumstance that has cropped up around this whole thing. There are YouTube channels out there that have done a far better job getting all the evidence together into a single cohesive video. I mean, I'd recommend Young Ye's video, I'd recommend um, Musclebound Gamer's video about it. They do a pretty good job. Go watch those guys, but this video is going to be more of a reaction to the different possibilities and different implications that this story has. And I don't even know exactly where to start because there's just there's a number of lanes that I could pick. Because to me, to me, this whole situation it reminds me of something like a like a choose-your-own-adventure novel where you don't know what your options are and the option is kind of gonna pick itself for you. That's kind of what this reminds me of. Because there are a number of ways this could go. And to give you guys a, a very, very brief summary of, of what is happening if, if you're not plugged in, there is this game that is announced that was announced back in April from this unknown indie studio called Blue Box Game Studios and the game is the, the code name has been given abandoned and it's this short one minute trailer of this footage of the this woods and this these signs and someone it's a bad looking footage of somebody walking with a handgun and this really dumb voiceover narration and from the moment that it was announced people looked at it and went that's very strange why is PlayStation giving this game attention front and center why is it allowing this this trailer on their their YouTube channel and to be fair it's not the first time that PlayStation has allowed a, a game of very questionable quality to premiere on their channel I mean look at that that god-awful pile of crap the Life of Black Tiger game, that got front and center attention, so it's not out of the realm of possibility. But it was weird to see this game, and supposedly now we learn now that that wasn't even real footage of the game, which is bizarre, but they said that they're aiming for 4K 60 frames graphics, ultra realism, all these amazing features with the DualSense controller and, and all this stuff, and yet it, it, the studio contradicts itself in its own introductory blog post where they say that the game is in early development, but at the time of writing it, it was going to come out at the end of this year, which makes absolutely no sense, but okay. And then we flash forward to June, where they... I don't know who at Blue Box thought this was a good idea, where they went, oh, guess the name of our game starts with an S, ends with an L. Hmm. What long dormant franchise begins with an S and ends with an L that people have been wanting to see and it gives like a, a visual implication in the trailer? Hmm. Silent Hill. So of course, immediately the company, uh, whoever runs the Twitter account was like, oh shit, we have to take this down. We, we, we have no association with Kojima, no association with Konami. We got none of that. And over the last few, I'd say maybe a week and a half, the internet has kind of done this thing and dug up all these strange bits of evidence and, and coincidence, which some of the evidence has been debunked. I'll give them that. Some of it can be rationally explained away. I'll give them that. And as far as I'm concerned, while I am fully not in the, this is a Kojima made Silent Hill game, I'm also not... I, I also don't fully believe that that something is not something is not going on that there's not something very shady and off about this whole situation because when you look at everything the developer has said 
when you look at all the evidence that's been dug up, when you look at the things that Hassan himself ha has said in video format or audio format to people like Jason Schreier and, and Jeff Keighley, it, it comes across as very strange because this individual wants to prove that they are a real person, that they have no association with Kojima or or Konami or Silent Hill, and yet they they are extremely vague with how they present themselves and this game. And that's not a good thing when it comes to marketing your video game, especially if you want to, like, if you want to discourage rumors that you're, you're, you are not who you say you are, then going about it this way is just actively, like, you're becoming your own worst enemy at this point. And I feel like at this point, Blue Box and Hassan, if, if they really aren't associated with Kojima or Silent Hill or, or Konami, then they have opened a they, they themselves have opened a Pandora's box that they that they are now going to have an extremely hard time closing and the blowback my god the blowback that they are going to receive if this is just if they're, if they're just some hack indie studio making some shit horror game for PlayStation oh my god the, I cannot imagine the blowback that's gonna happen um and while I, I obviously it goes without saying that no one should be harassing this guy and the team, no one should be sending death threats to them. That that's not cool. I also don't. I, I find it disingenuous for some of these people to come out and be like, "Oh, leave the guy alone. Leave the guy alone." Everyone still questioning this is harassing the man. Look at the man. He's about to cry. Oh, poor man. He's about to cry in his video that he did. And I know this is gonna make this is gonna make me sound like a dick, but if if this person Hassan and this company blue box really have just been intentionally fucking with people in order to get attention for their shit in the game um, I have no sympathy for them I, I really have zero sympathy because unless you've been living under a rock for the last 10 years or so you have to know coming on the internet and being vague about the game that you're making and saying and doing weird things is going to give you attention and people will speculate as to what the hell is going on and I, I I hate that this Hassan person this blue box person is now gonna they're gonna cry they're, they're gonna cry poverty now that they are like oh no we're not associated with Kojima we're not associated with Silent Hill even though we're being extremely vague about our game, even though the footage that we showed of the game is not actual footage of the game, even though we said at the time that it was early footage and we said the game was coming out this year, but it's in early development and we have an app. They have an app that's going to go onto the PlayStation Store on Friday, allegedly, if it doesn't get delayed again because it was supposed to come out on Tuesday of this week. And like they're still being extremely vague and wishy-washy about what that app actually is I, I I really just I'm like dude like what what are you doing <laughs> like what the hell are you doing like you have to know you you have to have some self-awareness that this is not going to end well if you're gonna continue to be vague and wishy-washy about the game that you're making that's just that that's just an unfortunate long-term consequence of the years long history of the video game industry playing this cloak and dagger game with announcing video games that, that it leads to situations like this and that's ultimately what I what one of the things I find very interesting about this case as well is that especially when it comes to Kojima um, Kojima has a history and this is this has ha not happened once but twice where he has created a fake studio to announce one of his games that turned out to be something that it, it wasn't at a first glance you all might not remember but when Phantom Pain Metal Gear 5 was first announced in 2012 at the the spike video game awards it was unveiled as not Metal Gear, but just a new game called The Phantom Pain from this this studio called Moby Dick Studio. And then they had, they, they literally, Kojima and Konami literally hired 
a guy to pose as a fake as an actor as a fake studio head to have some stunt interview with with press it was very bizarre and I understand why Kojima thought he needed to do it because one of the big themes of Metal Gear 5 is um, dis dissociative identity disorder and you know I guess he felt like he needed to announce the game by having a fake s studio head and a fake developer come out and, and talk about that it's, it's very bizarre but that's Kojima this is what he does he he has a history of, of lying to create surprises and while those lies and surprises are nice in the moment, especially the, the PT one, which I'll talk about in a sec. It does breathe this long-term mistrust of things, of things that come from the video game industry because there is this documented record of Kojima lying to people, like openly lying to people and going so far as to hire fake actors to pose as studio heads, which is something I've never heard of from I don't think that's ever happened before or since the whole Moby Dick thing. And with PT as well, if you guys don't remember, when PT was first announced back in 2014, I remember because I, I was watching it live when it went down with a friend of mine. PT was announced very publicly on PlayStation stage as a brand new indie horror game from this 7780 studio, which turned out to be Kojima Productions and Silent Hill before it unfortunately got cancelled and pulled from the PlayStation Store. Thanks a lot, Konami, you bunch of bitches. So, again, it, it, it's not once, but twice that Kojima has done this. And, and to the people that are like, well, Kojima, this is dumb, why would Kojima do something like this? Why would he not? Like, he's, he's independent now. He's free of Taskmasters. He has no one above him to tell him, hey, don't do this, don't do that. Like, he is creatively free to do whatever the hell weird shit he wants now. Here's where I currently stand. I would be much less convinced that something is something weird is going on with this studio and this Hassan person and Kojima if it wasn't for one particular factor, and that is Jeff Keighley. And... If you guys don't know who Jeff Keighley is, he's the 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 he's the show the sh the host of the video game awards. He's the guy that runs you know summer games sh fest. He's the guy that does the the Gamescom one night live kind of stuff. He's basically the the human embodiment of the the AAA video game industry. He's basically the face of the AAA video game industry as a whole. So he and Kojima have a very public friendship like like very public if there's anyone that kojima goes to in order to promote his stuff that isn't like a big outlet it's gonna be keely it, keely is the number one person he'll probably go to i mean just look at the summer games showcase that happened a couple weeks ago where on that platform is where kojima decided to announce death stranding director's cut he didn't do it through PlayStation's own channels. He didn't do it through IGN. He didn't even do it through Kojima Productions' YouTube channel, like, as a first. He went to Jeff Keighley and said, let me give you content to help you get views for your channel. Here is the first trailer for Death Stranding Director's Cut. And I'm sure, you know, Sony had an involvement with that as well, but I'm pretty sure Kojima is the one that's like, I want to go to Keighley for this, because Kojima and Keeley are really good friends. And also, Keeley has been acting very strangely when it comes to this whole blue box situation. Whenever he talks about blue box or Hassan or this whole thing, he always does it with this shit eating grin that is just like, uh, it's like, okay, well, what am I supposed to think? Like you're saying weird things like, oh, I've, I've talked to this Hassan person. Oh, I got a message from Hassan a couple months ago. Oh, that, that, you know, I, I took a screenshot of it. Oh, you know, oh, I, I'm, you know, Hassan is just this the interesting guy. And I, I think the game that he's trying to make is far more interesting than you guys are really. It's, it's like, dude, like Keely could not make it more obvious that there is something up with this whole thing. Like every time he just has this shitty grin that he talks with. And if you and if you go back 
and this is like the only like new bits of evidence that I'll, I'll put up. If you go back and look at Keeley's introduction to Kojima at the, the Summer Games kickoff or whatever the fuck it was called, the Summer Games Fest or whatever, he says something very odd when he's introducing Kojima. He says that he is going to introduce Kojima now, but they recorded this conversation because at the time uh, that they're doing the conference or the showcase, it's well past 3 a.m. there. Which, that is something that he did not specifically need to say. And the reason that ties into Blue Box is because Blue Box has a history of tweeting out stuff at very odd Netherlands hours because they're based in Netherlands. Whenever Blue Box tweets out something, it's always at like 3 a.m. or 2 a.m. their time. But it's like 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. Tokyo time. That's the association that people are making in that area of evidence to Kojima Productions. So it was just something very weird and specific that Keeley said that I was like, why would he say that? That's very strange. And then the fact, too, that if you look at the Death Stranding director's cut, Sam has a Netherlands flag on his backpack, he's wearing all blue, and he jumps into a box the incorrect way, creating a blue-filled box. Dude, come on. <laughs> like, come on, man. Like, like, come on. There has to be something there. Either, either this whole thing is just the, the most wild, like string of coincidences ever like like cosmic level of coincidences that happen to just bundle themselves together or something is going on and Keeley knows that so the other thing that I want to point out too with, with Jeff Keeley is that Jeff Keeley in the past has helped Kojima promote his wacky fake studio stuff when it was announced that Phantom Pain was coming out, and it was from that Moby Dick studio. Guess whose program it was revealed on? Jeff Keighley was the host. Spike Video Game Awards. Who was the person that interviewed the actor that posed as the fake studio head of Moby Dick Studio? Jeff Keighley. Um, who is the one that for years has always promoted Kojima, has always gone out of their way to get like exclusive scoops for Kojima, like like the death some of the Death Stranding trailers, and who always interviews Kojima, who always at these panels. When I was at PSX that one year, when Kojima was doing his Death Stranding panel, Jeff motherfucking Keeley was the one who interviewed him. There, if there's if there's any bit of evidence that I can point to and and confidently say that this is the reason that I am holding on to this and I'm not letting this go, it's Jeff Keeley. I'm I'm looking right at him and just being like I see you dude you you are not that clever to where you can hide from my gaze I am the fucking eye of Sauron and I got my gaze directly pointed at you motherfucker I know there is something going on and I know I know this makes me sound like some crazy person I know like I've been called crazy by like a couple friends that I keep like showing evidence to and they're just like, dude, you gotta let this go. This is not Silent Hill. This is nothing. But I am not convinced. I am not convinced that this is just nothing. That, 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 and you know what? It may end up being some hack studio that's just promoting their shit indie game in a very shady way. And if they're doing that, I, I have no sympathy for the hell that Blue Box and Hassan are gonna get. Because they should have fucking know better. But I don't believe that it is. I definitely believe that this is something and also this app that they're doing is very strange to me because what was the last game to get a dedicated app that Sony allowed on their store that gave people a preview of a game coming out PT not even PlayStation's own games get this kind of treatment I don't see Ratchet getting its own app I don't see Ghost of Tsushima getting its own app I don't see Returnal getting its own app, and yet this unknown ship muncher indie studio that is releasing trailers with false footage of their game is getting an app of their game on PlayStation Store. Um, 
S no, something's up. Like Sony, so I'm convinced that Sony knows something is up with how quiet they've been. I'm convinced that Kojima knows something uh, that with qu how quiet and coy he has been. I'm definitely convinced that, J that Jeff motherfucking Keeley knows something is up with how quiet and coy he's been. There is definitely something up with this blue box studios Hassan abandoned person. Hopefully we'll find out soon. Um, this app is supposed to go live on Friday. Hopefully that will be something worth talking about instead of some bullshit, some stringy along bullshit. I've heard rumors that Sony is going to be doing their next big showcase pretty soon. We'll, we'll wait and see. I, I, I am definitely not convinced that something is something weird is not going on with this whether it's kojima or silent hill that remains to be seen but yeah that's all i got for now thank you so much for watching everyone if you like what you see subscribe let me know what you think of this whole hassan abandoned thing it's so bizarre and as always i am razorblade mango thank you so much for watching and i will catch you all later bye